Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. For this video, we've got a really special one for you, Chromocell Therapeutics. We've welcomed the CEO to talk about his business. They actually just IPO'd recently here. We've got a lot to go through in today's video, but before we do, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a big help to myself, the channel. It also helps push this content to other people like you who may find value. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comments section below if you're currently holding shares of Chromocell, what you think about this business and how they stack up to some of their peers. Now with that being said, let's get into today's interview. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, a really exciting one for you. We've got the CEO, Frank Nuttall II of Chromocell. They just actually IPO'd recently here. So Frank, first time on the channel. We're really excited to learn about this one, but thanks so much for your time today and uh, a lot of questions to go through. Excellent, Bryce. Thank you for having me today and welcome everyone for uh, taking the opportunity to uh, hear more about Chromocell Therapeutics. Yeah, you're, you're most welcome. Uh, we were talking before we started filming here, Frank and I, about um, the impact that opioids have had on our communities and society. And, and this company really offers a unique alternative uh, to that opioid situation. So we'll get into that. But before we do, can you give us just a high level summary of what Chromocell is all about, uh, how you ended up with this organization and just kind of the elevator pitch here, Frank? Sure, absolutely. Uh, they are somewhat overlapping. Um, so Chromacell Therapeutics is uh, developing pain treatment therapies on a non-opioid basis based on our proprietary compound um, and specifically targeting you know, a, a method of, of dealing with various types of pain without the euphoric effects and addictive effects of opioids. So they are somewhat intertwined. Uh, inter intertwined. Um, the the uh, company has uh, an investor group uh, very solidly behind it, and I've known a number of those investors for many years, as well as the um, uh, the bankers that did our underwriting, Alliance Global. Uh, I've known those guys and worked with them uh, over many projects over the last decade. So um, the company's founder uh, needed uh, some assistance in putting together uh, our program to uh, become public, as, as well as putting together the operations and the diligence and the governance around it. Uh, so I joined about a year and a half ago after um, having a number of uh, my scientifically oriented colleagues at another life science company I was at look at the science and, and coming away very impressed. So I think we have an opportunity um, to to really make uh, to have a game changing therapeutic here. And um, you know, that was you know that combined with my relationship with the investors and our bankers is what drove me to um, to join the firm. Makes sense. I wanted to talk about that IPO because that's a super exciting uh, point for any company as they come onto the public markets, obviously new access to capital and all the rest, Frank. Um, but before we do, can you just talk about that proprietary uh, technology or science a little bit more? I know you had given me an explanation of kind of the super highway system in the body in terms of um, neurons and, and information flow. So uh, how can we think about this? So the, the science um, is based on dampening down the receptors associated with the NAV 1.7 channel. Uh, and everyone's body uh, has nine NAV channels, and you can think of them as the body's electrical superhighway. And there are two indications uh, that I think point out why we believe that this will be highly successful. Um, one is something called congenital insensitivity to pain. And literally someone who has SEPA, as it's called, doesn't feel pain. They could walk on hot coals, they would burn themselves, but wouldn't feel it. And people who suffer from this have no NAV 1.7 activity, none. Um, and it's, a, it's very, very rare, um, but they have no, um, no NAV 1.7 activity at all. Someone uh, on the other side of the spectrum who has too much NAV 1.7 activity um, suffers from an indication called erythromyalgia. So we you know, did research um, and, and Rockefeller University in New York uh, was part of the program for its early days, as was Dr. Stephen Waxman, uh, who's one of the foremost experts in the NAV channel research. Um, and posited that in tampening down the activity, uh, we would have a good pain therapeutic. Um, that 
that work was our work uh, on a preclinical basis uh, supported our theory um, in uh, multiple different types of animals. Uh, we had a successful phase one for safety, and we're in the process of moving towards our phase two. Um, but scientifically, it all comes down to tamping down basically the nerve receptors on the NAV 1.7 channel. Gotcha. Yeah, we appreciate the explanation there. And uh, I actually have heard of situations, uh, as you described, SEPA, I think you mentioned, where people don't have the feeling of pain. And, and it sounds great, but it obviously can have a, a lot of downside effects if you're unable to, I guess, protect your body uh, when it's in danger like that. So I appreciate you explaining that. Now, I understand you've also got pretty robust uh, IP intellectual property at Chromocell as well. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, is this protected and, and how are you guys set up, I guess, for, for subsequent future years here? Yeah, so the, the compound itself, and we'll talk a little bit about the different um, you know, therapeutic programs we've built on the compound, but the compound is, is uh, patented through 2034 or later, depending on the jurisdiction. Um, and we are working with Patent Council to file our patent term adjustments um, and believe we'll be able to get it out to 2040 or later, again, depending on the jurisdictions. So we've got a really, you know, really solid, robust um, protection around our, our core compound. And we have that uh, application or there were those patents granted in uh, countries representing a little over 2 billion people. Um, so outside the United States, um, certainly um, India, Japan, Mexico, Canada, uh, part of the EU. Um, so we have you know robust protection on our on our patent compound. Uh, on top of that, uh, we are working to uh, both expand and extend our patent protection moat, if you will, around our core program, uh, coming up with or developing additional uh, related compounds or delivery mechanisms. Uh, as the case may be, just depending on the program. So we have a robust um, you know, patent protection environment. Sure. And as I listen to that, I guess it really is a global problem or global addressable market. Uh, we obviously hear about the problems associated with opioid, opioid addiction a lot here in North America. Um, but people around the world are, are suffering from pain and, and could find benefit here, Frank. So um, phenomenal that you've got that patent protection. Now, I want to talk about monetization and some of those platforms you've built on top of this uh, this substance in a second here, but IPO is a big new, big news, big deal for any company. Uh, you guys went on the New York Stock Exchange main board, ticker symbol CHRO, you guys, so make sure you check them out. What does this mean for the organization and how does this allow you to kind of take your business to the next step, Frank? Yep. Thank you. So yeah, and, and uh, thank you to our partners of the NYSE American for their support um, in our going public, which we completed about three weeks ago. And um, it, it is really a, uh, an opportunity for us to provide a platform to investors uh, that we intend to build upon. And, and what is a platform? So uh, I mentioned we have the core compound. Uh, we have two programs built on that core compound. Additionally, we've in-licensed from Benuvia uh, additional non-opioid pain treatment therapies. Um, so uh, we're working on building a company that develops non-opioid pain treatment um, uh, drugs and therapies. And being public provides us with the opportunity to share that with our investor base and over the longer term, uh, we don't need it now, but over the longer term, it does provide easier access to capital. Uh, we have a very judicious approach to managing our research and development uh, and our overhead. Uh, so the capital we, we brought in with the IPO uh, will get us through a number of different stages um, you know, throughout this year and into early next. Um, but it does provide us with the opportunity to continue to build on on our platform uh, with additional non-opioid pain treatment therapies. Sure. Yeah, clinical stage and funding in place are two things you like to hear in the biotech space for sure. Now, you talk about in licensing and, and some of the other companies involved in the non-opioid pain treatment sector. Can you give us kind of a macro view on the landscape here? What's going on in the non-opioid space? Yeah, it's uh, the... Pain treatment therapies have been um, 
somewhat neglected over the last decade. Uh, there were a number of high profile misses, uh, clinical stage misses, uh, and then the opioid epidemic came to the forefront. Um, so it's, it's, it's been historically a, an underappreciated, historically the last 10 years, been an underappreciated uh, aspect of, of, of therapeutic options. Um, there is a um, resurgence, I might say, in, um, in, uh, you know, in understanding of pain, you know, alternate pain treatment therapies. And interestingly, uh, some of them are focused on nav channels. So there are a number of other companies in the industry that are focusing on uh, either NAV 1.7 or NAV 1.8. Again, we're NAV 1.7 um, for various other types of, of pain. Um, we have, uh, because there's so many, unfortunately, um, you know, different indications of pain and, and underlying illnesses or, or, or injuries that, that give rise to that pain, we don't have much in the way of direct competitors for the indications we're pursuing. But at the same time, there are at least three other companies we know of that are doing um, uh, drug research uh, on NAV 1.7 or NAV 1.8 compounds. Uh, one of them in particular has had two successful phase two readouts in the last 90 or 120 days on the pain indication they're going after. So, um, you know, the, the pain treatment therapies have, have largely been ignored for, you know, a decade or so, but there's a resurgence in, in focus and attention. And a lot of that is actually on, you know, the NAV channel approach. Yeah, and I, I suppose that's kind of a double-edged sword. It, it's uh, great to have competition, but it validates, I guess, what you guys are doing with the NAV channel uh, tr treatment or therapy. And I would imagine, Frank, um, you would expand or uh, widen your indications once you start to see some positive results for the ones you've mentioned, eh? Yes, for sure. And, and um, I think to your point, it clear, there's, there's clear validation scientifically that our approach um, uh, is, is a very you know, has a very strong positive likelihood of working, notwithstanding our preclinical success. Um, the one distinction I'd like to make is that um, there are unfortunately so many different aspects of pain that the other companies in the space are actually looking at different indications. So there's not a lot of overlap on indications now, effectively none. Um, and so while it, 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 the other companies give really good validation. They're not at the moment really direct competitors. Um, and to your point, yes, um, you know the um, you know the second program we launched is actually our first, if you will, offshoot uh, using the same compound. So uh, we have our compound. Um, uh, the original program is for the systemic treatment of chronic pain and a number of different uh, underlying indications there. Um, and we have a uh, new program or newer program for the treatment of acute eye pain. Um, so to your point, um, we're using the same compound in a different delivery mechanism with a different indication. And we will continue to explore and have done some early work on you know, even additional indications beyond you know, those, those that I've just mentioned. Sure. Yeah, unfortunately, no shortage of pain to go around, I suppose, eh, Frank? I've uh, no, really. I've had some back pain issues in my life as well, and I, I know firsthand how it can feel. Um, now, this has been a great interview. Awesome to get this one on the map and, and on the channel, Frank. We encourage you to come back as you guys continue to push through this development pipeline. I keep us apprised of the updates. Um, but for now, I'll kick it back to you for any closing thoughts and really enjoyed our discussion. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I'd just like to reiterate, I think that um, we have a really good opportunity here in what is unfortunately a very large market uh, to address, you know, pain treatment in a manner that's not addictive and doesn't have the euphoric highs that are associated with opioids. Opioids have their place for sure. Uh, but for chronic use, uh, they cause considerable issues or secondary effects. So um, we really have an, a very significant opportunity in a very large market to tackle that um, and have you know, uh, you know, uh, programs in place to do so. Um, we have a really solid management team 
Uh, our chief medical officer is Dr. Eric Lang, who's a trained anesthesiologist uh, who spent most of his career in, in pain drug development um, and you know, a very accomplished board and support. So I think we have all the pieces. We're going after a market that's very large um, and largely not well met with the current therapeutics um, and appreciate everyone's time for listening to our story today and, and thank you. Yeah, exciting stuff. Congrats again on the IPO. And this will be one we for sure continue to follow. You guys, if you're still watching, hopefully you found some value. Make sure you leave a comment in the section below, specifically if you're already holding shares. And if you have any thoughts or questions that we weren't able to get to in today's interview, if you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, we'd love to have you as part of the community. And that's all for now, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.